the deer, the deer, control over. Make your heading two two zero nine zero meters to waypoint two three over. We all want to be explorers at some point in our childhood, and to do deep sea research is to be a modern day explorer. The most alluring thing about the deep ocean is that it's unknown. The sea floor of our planet hasn't been mapped in the detail that the moon has. That's not a cliche, that's true. And that's exciting. You could go down to this place that no one's ever been, find something no one's ever seen, and be able to answer a question that no one's been able to answer before. The morning of your dive, you're really excited because you're getting to go to a place that few people get to go. You get into the submersible and you're lowered off the side. You sort of splash in and it's just this wild experience. As you descend through the water column, you lose light, and so you see this progression. And then before you know it, you're down on the deep sea floor and you see it sort of loom out of the distance. Control, control, deep rover, on bottom. Deep rover, this is control, on bottom, five, three, three meters. And then it's time to begin science. At the end of the day, we rely on our oceans as humans. We live on a planet which is constantly changing and that's quite sad given that the ecosystem in the deep sea hasn't even been explored in its entirety. We can't manage and protect what we don't know and what we don't understand. So it's sort of now a race to find out what lives there before it's changed and can't be changed back. Hopefully the research that I'm doing out here will eventually be used to better understand our oceans and also to better manage and protect our oceans for generations to come. Hello everyone, my name is Diva Amon and I'm a deep sea biologist working at the nexus of science, policy and communication. I'm absolutely thrilled to receive the 2020 Wings Woman of Discovery Sea Award. This was a complete surprise and I'm so humbled to be given this honour, especially as it's been bestowed on so many women that I consider to be personal heroes. I'd like to share a little bit more about why I do what I do with you and including why this award is so important. Although I'm currently filming this in London because my country's borders have been shut since March, I'd like to start this story in my home, the islands of Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean. I grew up loving the ocean and hours were spent playing on the beach, snorkeling, sailing, and I would often look out to sea and wish I could pull away that dark, murky water to reveal what was down in those depths. The Caribbean was really where my love for the ocean blossomed, and it wasn't until many, many years later, while at university, that I realised there was so much more about the ocean to love than what meets the eye in the shallows. The deep ocean is not only the Caribbean's largest ecosystem, but it also provides over 95% of all the habitable space on Earth. And with most of it still unexplored, there is no place on this planet that we know less about. It is a vast reservoir of biodiversity, still most of which hasn't been discovered. And it is absolutely essential to keeping our planet healthy and keeping us alive by providing key ecosystem services and resources. But, already unprecedented changes are happening. With our exploitation of the deep ocean only increasing, things may only get worse. If we continue to proceed blindly and irresponsibly, 
we will likely lose parts of our planet before we truly know them. My research tries to prevent this. It focuses on increasing our understanding of the deep ocean and then using that knowledge to mitigate our impacts and manage our deep oceans more effectively. Iconic places like the Grand Canyon and the Okavango Delta and the Himalayas all likely exist in the deep ocean. We just need to find them. And when we find them, we need to protect them. By engaging with national and international policymakers, I'm working to ensure that science informs key ocean governance processes. And finally, it has been an utter privilege to experience the ocean in the way that I have. And I feel compelled to share that. Not only do I want the kids who look out to sea to know about the manta rays, the yeti crabs, and even the bone-eating zombie worms, but I want them to be stewards that understand and value the absolute majesty of the ocean. The ocean is truly global, so all of humankind, not just an elite few, should know enough to inform the decisions we take, because ultimately that's how we'll preserve it for generations to come. To help make that a reality, I joined up with four friends to create Species. Species is a not-for-profit NGO that uses science, education and advocacy to ensure a better understanding of marine ecosystems amongst all stakeholders in Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean. Just last week, we launched the Maritime Ocean Collection, which integrates state-of-the-art 360-degree photography, Google Street View, smartphone technology and videography and allows anyone, whether you're an adult or a child or a Trinbagonian or a visitor, to view Trinidad Tobago's remarkable underwater world. I highly encourage you to check it out if you have a chance. So 2020 has certainly been a challenging year, but for many working in conservation, the struggle is set to increase exponentially, as many funding agencies will unfortunately be tightening their belts. Hence, this Wings Award has really come at a great time. I cannot underscore how important unconstrained funding like this is, particularly for women who often have to forge unconventional paths in order to create change and find solutions. This award will allow both myself and Species to continue to shine a light on the ocean so that we can manage and protect it better. I wish I'd been able to thank you all in person. I'm keeping my fingers crossed for next year. But once again, thank you, thank you, thank you.